Uh, I'm laughing because I was looking at a comment that came in, uh, I guess, uh, just before we went live. It, it's from Spike Moto. It says, will we be watching the real Jerry Rosa or will be, we be watching the deep fake? <laughs> well, I was born a deep fake, so <laughs> you're probably watching the deep fake. Um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but that it is scary if you watch that video that I have a link to uh, about deep fake. It'll make you think. I'm seriously telling you. Uh, MFC says, no one can deep fake Jerry Rosa who is going to do all that work. Uh, well, no one would want to deep fake me right now, that's for sure. Uh, I do have three videos uh, that I think you'll enjoy this morning. They're all short, but uh, I think you'll enjoy them. Um, I realized that after I showed you the progress I already made laying those blocks that I didn't. I forgot to show you how I hauled them. So that's going to be clip number one this morning. We're going to be showing you how I uh, hauled the block. So here it is. Well, there's the first load of block. Uh, that's about I'm going to say roughly 10,000 pounds of block, probably 9,000 pounds for sure. It's a 12,000 pound trailer, so I didn't see any point in pushing it any further since I had to make two trips anyway. And now I'm going to narrow the forks down here to be able to poke them through there. Okay, so now the bugs are just flying in my face like crazy. All right, well, we're going to unload this. I'm not going to be able to film it because all I've got is my phone camera right now but I'll show you what the trailer looks like empty here in just a minute well there's what she looks like unloaded there's four pallets and man they are heavy the bobcat handled it no problem but it's uh it wouldn't take much more to overload the bobcat and there's the trailer unloaded I've got to get ready to go get the next load Whoops, I cut that off short and I can't go back to it, unfortunately, the way this thing is designed. If I go back to it, it'll start the whole thing from the beginning. So anyway, uh, that last little clip there was uh, just being in the yard there at Menards and uh, it didn't really show any action going on or anything, but it was just showing the truck uh, as it had uh, two pallets loaded on it while I was at Menards. Um, yeah, I don't know if you can notice in that first clip there where I was uh, putting on the forks, uh, the bugs flying in the air. Oh, man, the bugs are crazy here right now, and it, especially the horse flies. Oh, my gosh, those horse flies are eating me alive. Um, I'm, I was noticing that somebody said delays, uh, Zappa said delays, so if it is delaying, it's probably because I'm at the house and uh, we, you know, we're Wi-Fi between here and the shop, and the shop is where the main connection is. So uh, it's possibly that, and it's also possibly because Sue's probably using it also right now, and uh, so we're probably competing for, uh, you know, uh, bandwidth. But anyway, so that's how I hold the block, and it's really a blessing to have that big truck and trailer. Um, I use that big truck and trailer to haul the Bobcat too if I need to take it for service of some sort or if I want to, like I hauled it over to Ron's place and did some uh, leveling of the ground for him uh, once before and some things like that. Um, let's see, uh, so that's that was the hauling the block. Well, you know, I uh, showed you a little bit of the uh, wall progress yesterday. Well, I made quite a bit more progress today, so take a look at this. It's 620 in the morning and you can see that I'm going to work in the fog. <laughs> Pretty heavy fog this morning. Not quite as heavy as it can be, but uh, fairly heavy. A little bit dark this morning, so I was waiting until it lightened up a little bit to get started. Well, here's the progress I made today. Some pretty good progress. I've only got about maybe six or so more blocks lengthwise to go for the wall, maybe a little more. Uh, I got three rows high and I have it all backfilled too, up to that point. As you can see, it's all filled with gravel. Uh, yeah, a couple of them are a little low, but, but they're mostly filled. I'll have to get a little more gravel and finish it up, but uh, 
that's not bad considering how bad the horse flies were this morning i i killed at least uh I would say close to two dozen horse flies and got bit at least a dozen times. And it's just amazing how bad the horse flies were this morning. But it's looking pretty good. That's quite a bit of work. That's two full pallets of block. Let me see what time it is. It's, it's just now nine o'clock. I started at 6.30. So that's really a pretty good amount of work done in just a very short amount of time. And that includes driving the bobcat uh, a mile down the road to pick up a load of uh, gravel and then also taking it out into the creek and picking up another uh, scoop of gravel and then backfilling all this stuff. Anyway, it's uh, looking pretty good. I think if I can get the last few blocks laid tomorrow morning, then probably uh i'll just keep laying block until i'm done tomorrow i because going up is no problem uh it's that goes fast that laying that first block and getting it all level and square is the hard part yeah it's uh it was quite a bit of work uh, again there was not one for my millimeter friends there was not one square centimeter that was dry on my clothing uh, this morning. Oh my gosh, it's so humid you could cut it with a knife. I'm not lying to you. It's it's really like working in a sauna. Uh, and then, you know, it's like, you know, you, when you're doing this kind of work, it's hard enough already. And then, so you've got this super crazy heat wave and super heavy humidity and just tons of horse flies biting like crazy and uh, not to mention a few mosquitoes and the regular flies too are biting too. Generally when flies are biting really bad, now I don't know about horse flies, but when regular flies are biting real bad that's a sign that the weather's changing that you're going to get some rain generally. Um, that's just an old timer's way of, of telling you that you're going to get rain. And they were biting pretty good too, just the regular flies this morning. So We'll have to see about that. Um, it looks like there's a few questions and things scrolling up over there, so we'll get to those in just a minute. But I thought you might get a kick out of seeing Sue's next batch of homemade clay. Here it is. Just thought I'd show you this is Sue's next batch of clay. Doesn't it look like chocolate icing or something? I mean, it's amazing. But uh, it's turning out to be pretty good clay. And that comes right out of the cave. It's amazing. I, you know, like I had, you know, you've heard me say a couple of different times that uh, that is the stickiest dirt that you'll ever run into in your life. Um, it doesn't even wash off your shovel. I mean, it's like it smears off your shovel. And uh, like when you're trying to wash it off, you know, it's, it's, it's literally like trying to um, wipe off silicone caulk off of something. I mean, it's just like that. It, I've never seen dirt like it, but it seems to be really excellent clay. And uh, it, it really does look like it's something you're supposed to eat. Because the first day that uh, Cash saw that in my shop, I said, oh, that's just some fudge brownies Sue made. You can have a piece. And so he walks, he walks over there, he starts to dip into it. But I, I didn't have the heart to let him do it. I, <laughs> I should have let, let him take a piece and then bite into that dirt. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been funny. Uh, Clay, we, I mean, um, Cash, yesterday we had his uh, lesson here in my man cave. That was the first time we've had the lesson here inside the man cave. And it's just so hot and I didn't feel like going out there to cool off the shop, you know. So he came inside here. He was real impressed with my man cave and all the deer heads because he's he comes from a, a, a hunting family also. And uh, so he, he could hardly concentrate on the lesson. He was looking at the deer heads and all the different uh, other things I have too. I have a lot of large sheds that we found here on the farm and uh, got a bobcat in there and some different things. So he was, he was in heaven here. <laughs> yesterday and he's he's really learned how to play uh, um, wildwood flower uh, much faster than the, than the when he was learning to play that uh, first tune picking and I knew that would be the case I told him I said yeah it's a lot of trouble this very first time to learn that first tune but I said I guarantee you 
the next one I teach you, you'll learn it a lot faster. And sh so it, sure enough, that's proved to be true. He's, he's learned this one in only really two lessons, and uh, he's pretty much got it down now. Uh, he just needs to smooth it out a little bit, but he's pretty much got it down. Looks like uh, Zappa was the first one in. Doug Centennialo, uh, he says, good afternoon, Jerry. So he's on the East Coast, so it's uh, afternoon for him already. Um, Michael Buss from Germany. Uh, Paul Aker says, uh, thumbs up, people. <laughs> so please do that. It, click the thumbs up if you would. Paul Lanier, hi from Frigid South, Louisiana, Baton, La Baton Rouge. He says, uh, projected day under triple digit heat <laughs> well maybe next month but uh, not today um okay it says uh, jim page uh, nobody hates horseflies as much as i do well maybe they do there's room for uh, all of us to hate those things <laughs> I'm telling you, they are horrific here. Now, we didn't have a horsefly one until after those Martins left. Um, I mean, I saw one or two during the time the Martins were here, but like literally one or two. This morning, I'm knocking them off by pairs. I mean, like there's two of them at a time flogging you. Uh, it's unbelievable how many there are. And then you kill the, those one or two and then, you know, and they'll land on the bank. Fortunately, they land right on the bank right in front of me there, too. And so I'll reach up and smack them really quick. And that's the next guy's uh, comment. Well, there's Matt Tommen from Denver, Colorado. But then uh, Ran Jarog says, uh, how are you fast enough to kill the horse flies? I can never uh, seem to hit one. Well, I seriously killed well over a dozen of them this morning. And uh, I didn't put a dent in them. I'm not kidding you. Those purple martins would have a field day here now if they were here now. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Jim Page says he's watching from North Port, uh, Florida, where horse flies are prohibited. I'll tell you a funny side story. <laughs> I, I just finished up what I was going to do today, and there's two young gals that are... Uh, uh, staying at the rental retreat, and they were uh, headed out to Fort Leonard Wood this morning. Their uh, their soldiers graduating, and uh, anyway, they were here together. Uh, one of them has a, I don't know, a, a male soldier, and the other one has a female soldier. And I don't remember if they're somehow related or they're just friends. But anyway, the the point is that uh, you know I was. Uh, saying goodbye to them. They rolled their window down, and wouldn't you not know, one of those horse flies roll, flew in the window. Now, these are city girls, by the way. And I said, yeah, those darn horse flies, those things have been biting me all day. And, and the one girl says, they bite? And man, the doors fly open. <laughs> they, they were having a fit because that big old horse fly was buzzing around inside their car. I seriously, it's a good thing they weren't driving when that happened because, man, they would have wrecked for sure. Because, I mean, the doors flew open. And I said, well, it's not that bad. I said, they, 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 they hurt about like two regular fly bites. They're not real bad, you know. But uh, but they're not fun either. I said, boy, they, when they nail you on you, they always, those the horse flies, they almost seem like they really do have a brain because, uh, you know, like as soon as you grab that block and bend over, that that's when they fly on you because they know you're vulnerable. And man, they nail you. Oh golly, I, it was it was so frustrating. I mean, like you just like I said, you the work itself is hard enough, and then you got to deal with the flies and the heat and the humidity and oh, just tough. But I'm getting it done. <clears throat> Uh, Doug says, what is the clay used for? Well, Sue just likes to dabble in pottery and stuff. And uh, she, in fact, just got a brand new potter's wheel. And um, she uh, literally has not even used it yet. I mean, we were putting it together just like 15 minutes before we went live this morning here. So we, she's in there playing with it right now, probably, uh, more than likely anyway. Um, uh, Kevin says, how do you anchor the blocks? No concrete. Uh, you don't really have to anchor these kinds of blocks. They're an engineered block. They have a ledge on the back of each block and you slide them forward and that ledge catches the block below and um, 
it, it, it just gradually, it, as long as you, you know, make your everything good and level, it gradually walks the wall back about a half an inch at a time, and the walls are really stable and strong. Uh, the only thing you can do to anchor them is they give, well, they don't give nothing, but you know, you know what I mean, I'm just saying that. They, they provide, if you buy it, a, a, a fiberglass um, mesh, it's like a netting, and you, I think at about four blocks up, you lay that in there, and uh, then you cover that with dirt and stuff, and it, it keeps, you know, it keeps the wall tied together as you, you set the next row of blocks on that netting, and it, it keeps the wall from coming forward. But if you make the wall flat, uh, flat and straight and everything, and get it really, if you're meticulous about it, you won't have any problem with the wall anyway, because it's just, it's engineered to, to make the weight go back, and then you backfill it as you go and keep it really, and I backfill it with gravel so that it really does fill it well compared to like if you tried to fill it, backfill it with dirt, the dirt's always going to settle. The gravel doesn't settle much. I mean, it'll settle, of course, a little bit, but not very much compared to dirt. So that's why I chose gravel to backfill it with. Um, let's see, moving on. <clears throat> The last uh, one here says, uh, Jim Page, all kidding aside, annoying, biting insects can make doing anything a pain. The guys who dug the Panama Canal, <laughs> oh man, must have been tortured. Oh yeah. Yeah, I can't even imagine that. I mean, <laughs> you would be surprised how many insects were bugging me this morning. I mean, how many? I, it's just unbelievable. And like the day, the day I was unloading those blocks, there were some kind of flying bugs in the air, and I don't know what they were, but they were getting in my mouth and everything. I mean, like, I'm a mouth breather, so I have to breathe through my mouth, and that's why it sounds like I'm sighing a lot. People have commented a lot, and why are you sighing about? What are, what are you mad about? You know, or, and I'm not. I'm just breathing. I have to breathe through my mouth. My, my sinuses have never worked. That's just another one of my genetic defects. And uh, so I had to take these big deep breaths and everybody hears that all the time and they think I'm sighing. But anyway, um, it's, uh, you know, it, it's a real pain to breathe when those bugs are flying around that thick. And I mean, they were thick that day I was unloading those blocks. They're, that kind of bug wasn't there today, but the flies and mosquitoes and the, the real stinging biting ones were, no question about that. Well, I think that's about everything I wanted to cover this morning. Uh, we don't look like we have too many questions. If you would, please give us a thumbs up and all that good stuff. I'll just remind you that our live show will be next Thursday, a week from tonight. Uh, we'll be uh, live on this channel here at 7 o'clock p.m. That's Central Standard Time, my time here. And uh, the, whole, the full band will be there, uh, including Bill Pilliard. Bill is not technically part of our band, but he'll be here too. And then uh, I've invited a guest, uh, Loretta uh, Peterman is her name, and she's going to be here as well. And then I also found, and I literally just found, a new secret weapon that you, no one has ever seen on the channel before. And uh, in fact, I didn't know this person until uh, last Tuesday night at uh, Dickie's Barbecue Pit. You're going to get a kick out of this uh, secret weapon, and we will put the secret weapon on at halftime. And uh, I will also try to create a short video, maybe a 10-minute video. So the secret weapon is just going to do like two songs. And... Um, then we'll do a short video and then the band will come back and play a second set. The first set will be primar primarily just um, you know secular type songs and then the uh, second set will be primarily gospel songs but not necessarily all gospel. I mean I just want to be clear about that because the last time people said well that's not a gospel song well like I said we're gonna mostly do gospel in the second set but not completely. Um, if anybody uh, you know has requests, you can send those in. But uh, quite honestly, that didn't work out all that well last time, and we we had way more requests than we had time. And uh, but we will try to get to a few of those requests if we can. And you can make requests during the live show as well. 
So that's going to be about it. Uh, be sure to put your comments and questions in today's video if you want me to cover something tomorrow in Shop Talk. And more than likely, I'll be covering my Shop Talk from right here because it's, it's uh, just so hot and, you know, bad outside that I just don't want to deal with the shop. And um, it'll be much easier to just do it right here. So I'll probably do the Shop Talk tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock from this location here. Again, just be sure to put your questions, comments, and or topics that you'd like me to discuss tomorrow. That's it, I think, finally. Uh, we will see you in the morning.